Hey, welcome to the Rocket and Raygun Awards here on EPN. I'm Victor Lucas, and we are deep into the categories right now. We're moving on to our next one, which is Best Action Game or Shooter, and we've got lots of great nominees for you. Let's take a look at them right now. Far Cry 5, developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. Call of Duty Black Ops 4, developed by Treyarch and published by Activision. Destiny 2, The Forsaken Expansion, developed by Bungie and published by Activision. Firewall Zero Hour, developed by First Contact Entertainment, published by Sony Interactive Entertainment. Battlefield 5, developed by EA Dice and published by Electronic Arts. All right, I'm going to give you guys my pick and EPN's pick for the best action game or shooter of 2018. But first, we have to hear from the community out there. So for me, the best action or shooter game of 2018 is Far Cry 5. My favorite shooter of the year has got to be Red Dead Redemption, and that is coming from someone who wasn't a huge fan of the first one. I think it controls better, I think it looks better, but more importantly, it actually makes you feel as a badass outlaw of the Wild West. Doing cool tricks like the dead eye technique and shooting a few people when time slows down and they all just fall like flies, that to me signifies a great shooter, when you can actually nail all those shots and feel like a complete unstoppable force. Red Dead Redemption 2, with its incredibly large and detailed world, well-told story, relatable yet crazy characters, and overall attention to detail. It's just an incredible game all around and is a complete package in my opinion. Shears were rough this year. Shears were rough this year. Um, let's see, my favorite shooter of the year 2018. I'm gonna give it to the V, the BFV because if they throw any more numbers or letters in there, it's just gonna get way too confusing. So my favorite shooter of 2018 has to go to Firewall Zero Hour. It's a four on four tactical shooter in the vein of Rainbow Six, but putting it in VR makes it so much more immersive. When you're looking down the sights, creeping around corners, coordinating with your team, it's some of the most fun I've had in VR and some of the most fun multiplayer I've had in a long time. I love it. My pick for the very best shooter of 2018 has to be Call of Duty Black Ops, and that's kind of mind-blowing to me because normally I'm pretty big COD hater, but this newest one, despite the fact that it is just multiplayer, is so freaking tight. I love having a battle royale mode, I love the zombies, I love just the basic multiplayer where you're running around and trying to accomplish different objectives. And for that, I actually have to tip my hat to Activision for trying something so different and really having the experience experiment pay off. The Call of Duty franchise is feeling a little bit played out, but Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and particularly the Battle Royale mode, it was something surprisingly great this year. I think we're all getting a little bit Battle Royale out, I know I am, but leave it to Activision, leave it to the Call of Duty franchise to bring this in as an add-on to their already solid multiplayer game and actually kind of refresh Battle Royale, make it fun, make it look really great. <laughs> Never would have expected it, but Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is my action or shooter game of the year. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we got another vote for Call of Duty Black Ops 4, actually from uh, Graham Coombe, who says, the most polished shooter of the year, Call of Duty always knows how to do it right. And he gives it a 9.5 out of 10 on the Graham scale. Uh, Paul Adamson wrote in and said his favorite action uh, game or shooter is Far Cry 5. Both of those games are incredible. Let's take a look at our nominees here, though. Uh, we've got uh, Far Cry 5 from Ubisoft Montreal, which really was an impressive undertaking. They took us into the wilds of Montana, they had us hunting all kinds of ferocious animals, sometimes taming them, and they become our friends, and then they become ferocious animals on our side, which is pretty damn cool. It was a really, really fun experience. It was great to get lost into that world, and Ubisoft Montreal definitely needs to be commended for that. I was honestly a huge fan of Destiny 2 Forsaken. I'm still into the game. I've been playing it sort of all year long, getting caught up on different expansions. I was very impressed with Forsaken, though, taking us in and sort of twisting a lot of the, uh, the narrative and a, a lot of the familiar around in different ways. And it's just an, a super fun game to play with other people. And this is what happens when I jump into Destiny 2. Suddenly I've got a partner or a couple partners who are, you know, playing with me. But more often than not, they're helping me because they're like level 50 and they've got everything. They've got all kinds of cool weapons. And they're sort of guiding me and, and sort of re-educating me. One thing that I, I really kind of noticed when I jumped back into Destiny 2 again was like, wow, I forgot what all the icons mean and where I got to go and what I have to do. But I always have a great time provided I'm playing with other people and I think that is the secret to why Destiny 2 persists. It's an extraordinary escape with friends and Forsaken was really really fun. Firewall Zero Hour, I think we have to give them an award for the worst game name 
of 2018 because it's impossible to remember that one. But the VR grid is right. It is a terrific shooter. I had an excellent time playing with this one as well. It's kind of like Counter-Strike or a Rainbow Six type of experience, but in VR. The mechanics are tight. And again, it's it's an excellent one to play with friends because it's all about team play and, and wiping out the other guys before they wipe you out. Battlefield Five, I think, uh, has some exceptional production quality and uh, some really terrific design work. They've always excelled at... Uh, uh, giving you a ton of toys in the toy box and lots of room for lots of people racing at each other and trying to kill each other in different camps and get to those objectives first. But it also feels like it's being parsed out a little bit. The fact that there was no Battle Royale game in a game that seems so, uh, yet, that seems so suited for Battle Royale felt a little weird. But hard to argue with the beauty of it. I also love the vignettes, the single player vignettes. It, it was a terrific game and I think EA and DICE seem to be committed to make it more terrific as time goes on. So by, you know, middle of 2019, I think it's going to become the battlefield force to be reckoned with. That kind of leaves Call of Duty Black Ops 4 as the one that I would choose as the best shooter of 2018, best action sort of core experience of 2018. You know, some shocking decisions there, removing the single player component because the Black Ops games have always been pretty elaborate with single player, but actually the game has really benefited from the uh, Battle Royale experience. Blackout is awesome, and it really ties together a lot of, you know, core, familiar Call of Duty experiences and, and weapons and design conceits. It just makes you feel like such a badass, you know? You, you really do feel like if you've got some skills and some familiarity with that world, and you can do all right, riding the ranks in there just feels incredible. It's a really, really fun experience, but I do feel that Call of Duty shouldn't remove single player fully. It was missed in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. However, that didn't stop Call of Duty Black Ops 4 from winning the Rocket and Raygun Award for Best Action Game or Shooter.